Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to solve a linear problem using graphical method. Now this problem is almost same to the problem that we have discussed in third example of linear problem using graphical method. It is literally same with a slight twist. If you can see here, we have imported the very same video, we have imported the very same question here because it is literally the same with the only difference being that instead of this minimize we are this time given go ahead and maximize this problem instead of minimizing as we did in last case this time we are going to maximize it now if we go ahead and maximize it we can recap you can watch the previous video for complete details We'll just go through a recap of this, how we have done it. Now this is our first constraint x1 minus 2 x2 less than 1. This is our second constraint x1 plus 2 x2 greater than 3. So here is our second constraint, here is my first constraint. What I do is, I put x1 as 0 in order to find points so that I could go ahead and plot them on graph. I put x1 is equal to 0. If I put x1 is equal to 0, this equation x1 minus 2 x2 is equal to 1 reduces to 0, x1 has become 0 as I put over here. So, I put x1 is equal to 0 over here and by doing so, this becomes 0 minus 2 x2 is equal to 1. Same constraint becomes 0 minus 2 x2 is equal to 1 because I have put x1 is equal to 0. Now, by doing so, minus 2 x2 is equal to 1 or x2 is equal to this minus 2 goes here. So, x2 I get as minus half. This time I am flipping it. I am putting x2 is equal to 0. If I put x2 is equal to 0, this term vanishes. This term vanishes. You get x1 is equal to 1. Here is our second point. What about the second constraint? We have converted them into equality so that we can get lines and from those lines we will go ahead and find the margin uh, areas, regions. Let us pick this, we have put x1 is equal to 0 and when we put x1 is equal to 0 in this case, in this equation, this term goes away. If this term goes away, you are left with 2x2 is equal to 3, 2x2 is equal to 3 or x2 is equal to 3 by 2. If uh, you feel that this video is hurrying on to you, you can watch the previous video. I will put a link over here, you can see. The link might be flashing at this time. So, you can go through that video to see how these values are coming. We will rush to th through this one because we have already solved it in solved it in other video. Now, this time I put x2 is equal to 0. If I put x2 is equal to 0 over here, this term vanishes giving me x1 is equal to 3. If I put x2 is equal to 0, this term vanishes giving me x1 is equal to 3. Then I go ahead and plot these points 0 and minus half 1 and 0 x1 is 0, x2 is minus half. This is the point. Then you have a x1 1 and x1 is 1 and x2 is not moving from this axis, so it is 0. Then the another point is x1 0 and x2 is 3 and a half. x1 0 is on this axis, x2 axis s1 is 0 and x2 is uh, 3 and a half now sorry 3 by 2 this becomes 3 by 2 next is x1 3 and x2 0 x1 goes up to 3 x2 remains to 0 so these are my constraints this is my first constraint this is my second constraint first constraint is of type less than first constraint is of type less than less than is the area towards the origin if i have a look at this constraint where is the origin area if we look at this constraint, where is the origin? Here is the origin. So, all this area is less than type, but we are not taking all of this area. We are just taking this area. Why are we taking this area? You can again go back to that video and watch why we have taken only this area. Then second constraint is here. Second constraint is of type greater than. Greater than is away from origin. If you have a look at this second constraint here is your second constraint this is the origin this is the area towards origin 
So we will not be taking this area towards the origin, rather we will be taking the area away from origin, we will be taking this area. And why I am not taking all of this area, why I am only, ta I am only taking this area? Because these three quadrants are rejected, second quadrant, third quadrant and fourth quadrants are rejected. Who rejected them? This final constraint. So second, third, fourth quadrant are gone. From first quadrant, this is the only feasible region. So here we have R feasible area, feasible region. This is our feasible region. Then for this feasible region, we found out the corner points. The corner points were A, B, C and D. The coordinates for A were straightforward. X1 is only 0, it is not moving. X2 is 1.5, which was in fact this point. So for A, we had 0 and 1.5. For B, we see that it is an intersection of a constraint 1 and constraint 2. So whenever you are having an intersection point, to find the value of that point, what you can do is you can solve these two constraints. You solve these two constraints and you will get this point, the point. So in order to get this B point, I will solve this constraint 1 and constraint 2 simultaneously. Here is the solution. x1 minus 2, x2 is equal to 1. x1 minus 2, x2 is equal to 1 is my first constraint. Here I have my first constraint. Second constraint is x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 3. x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 3. Now when we go ahead and try to solve them simultaneously, we see that x2 is balanced. We have minus 2x2, we have plus 2x2. Just go ahead and subtract them. Oh, sorry, add them. If you add them, they will cancel each other out. If you add these, you will get 2x1. If you add these, you will get 4. 2x1 is equal to 4, giving you x1 is equal to now, once I have the value of x1, I can go ahead and substitute this value in either of these constraints, in first one or second one. We have taken the first constraint, which says x1 minus 2x2 is equal to 1. Now, x1, I know it, its value is 2. So, I will put that value of 2. So, x1 is 2 minus 2x2 2 is equal to 1. Remaining everything is same, just I have substituted the value of x1. All I have done is substitute the value of x1. So, x1 is... 2 minus 2 x 2 is equal to 1. This 2 goes on that side becomes minus 2. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So I have minus 2 x 2 is equal to minus 1. So this minus 2 can go below the 1. It is going below the 1. We have minus 1 upon minus 2. Minus is cancelling up, leaving me with a 1 by 2. So x 2 comes out as 1 by 2. So coordinates of B, this is the exercise that we were performing to solve the coordinates of B. So coordinates of B come out as x1 is equal to 2 and x2 is equal to half x1, 2 and x2, half. C, you see that C is going on extending. We have no idea where, up to what point this feasible region could extend. There is no clue what will be the limits of this feasible region. Maybe it could go on and on and on. So I am not sure up to what point this feasible area is extending. So I will call it infinite, infinite. For C, I am giving it an infinite, infinite. And this is my point D. For D, I am not giving infinite, infinite because as far as X1 is concerned, X1 is stuck at 0. On this axis, X1 is not moving anywhere. X1 will be 0. You can be here. It is 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. So X1 will always be 0. X2 may be changing to 1, 2, 3 and 4 and so on. So if you go to infinity, still x1 will be 0. So you have x1 as 0 and x2 as infinite. x1 as 0, x2 as infinite. Then what we do? As we have the coordinates, we know that the extreme points of any region are at its corners. Corner points always have extreme values. So the, this is my feasible region. You've seen here it is my feasible region. These are my corner points A, B, C and D. I go ahead and find the value of Z at these corner points because I know that value of Z at these corner points is going to be extreme. So we substituted 0 and 1.5 in Z. This is my Z. You can check. Z is equal to 5x1 plus 4x2. So I went ahead. 5x1 plus 4x2. Instead of x1, I will be putting a 0. And instead of x2, I will be putting a 1.5. 0, 1.5, this makes 0, 4 into 1.5 is 6, I get a value of 6. This is 6, done, we have a 6. Next is 2 and 0.5, 2 and 0.5, 5 into 2 give me 10, 4 into 0.5 will give you a 2, 
10 plus 2 would be giving us a 12. Then infinite, infinite. 5 into infinite, 4 into infinite because C is this point infinite, infinite. Your value would be infinite. For case D, again your value will be infinite. Now, the difference between the two, num two numericals that we did in previous video and the one we are doing today is this. Last time we tried minimizing the result. Can you tell me the minimum value from this? Infinite, huge positive. Infinite, again huge positive. 12, better than those two infinites. So definitely B is a be better point compared to C and D. This is for sure. Because those are positive infinites. What about A? A is still better than B because it is 6 only. So for minimizing 6 is a very good value as we saw in the previous case, previous video. But this time the problem is that you need to, you wish to maximize it. And when we try to maximize it, 12 is better than 6 because it is a higher value. So 12 is better than 6. So 6 is rejected this time. Infinite is still better than 12 because 12 is only this much. Infinite is huge value, huge. So, C is better than B. What about D? D is also better than B because B is only 12 while D is infinite. So, in this kind of problem where we are trying to maximize a case and we get this kind of area which is open to sky, which is open on one limit, which in technical terms, what we are going to say here is, we are not saying that it is open, we are saying that it is unbounded. The answer to this question, to, to this problem will not be this, this will not be my answer this will not be my solution this is the solution for case of minimizing if you wish to minimize the problem then this was your answer as we checked in last video for this case when you are trying to maximize it your answer are no values there is no limit to where i can go i cannot go on and produce infinite tables infinite chairs i cannot go on eating infinite types of foods because infinite is not a feasible value. When we are talking of business, when you are talking of resources, when you are talking of production, infinite is not a feasible value. You are giving me an unbounded solution. There is no limit to your solution what you are giving me. So, in this case, I will not say my solution is A, B, C or D. I would go ahead and say that the The given problem has unbounded solution. There are no coordinate values that I can tell you. It is unbounded. It is a special case of graphical solutions. If you get a minimization problem in this question, it is a normal case. And I gave you answer in the previous question video. But if you get a maximization in this, it becomes a special case. So that very same problem depending on whether you are trying to minimize it or maximize it may give you a proper unique solution or it may give you an unbounded solution. This is the situation. That very same problem for Z min it gave me a solution in previous video for Z max it is giving me an unbounded solution. So this is a special case of linear programming. In linear programming we have certain special cases like we have an unbounded solution as it was this. Then we have a no solution. You might come across cases where there is no solution possible only. So that is a special case. Then there are infinite number of solutions. These are certain special cases of linear uh, solution of linear pro programming problem using graphical method. Fine. So, if you have any queries regarding this video or this topic or any other topic that you wish us to cover, you can leave it in comment section. You can leave your suggestions in the comment section and please do subscribe to the channel, do like and share.
थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग बाय टेक केयर here are some cards related to the video you just watched feel free to browse across them and do leave your comments and suggestions and of course don't forget to subscribe if you have not already subscribed thanks for watching bye bye